Hey, I'm Jeremy, and welcome to another interactive encoder shootout. Today, we're testing three hardware encoders at three price points. We'll compare their quality of H.264 streaming and help you decide which price tier is best for you. It's time to test the Majorwell Ultra Encode SDI, the Vidion Edgecaster EZ, and the Osprey Talon 4KSC. Let's do it. So why did we pick these three encoders? Well, we had them around and they have similar form factors and IO. All are under a half rack wide and fit nicely in a one U rack shelf. They have one SDI input and one ethernet port. And they can also all handle different types of IP video from SRT to RTMP and many more. There are some differences though in hardware, weight, some extra IO and more, but the biggest difference is the price. The Magewell is under $500, the Vidion above $1,000, and the Osprey above $2,000. So with each step comes a doubling of price. But now let's just toss that aside and set up a blind test. Being a three-way test, this one's a bit different from our previous videos. These are the settings we use for all three of them. We streamed to YouTube via RTMP on each encoder, and these streams are all linked in the description of this video. But I'm sure you've noticed that there are actually four streams in the description. And that's because the Osprey needed two tests. One of the tests looks incredible with the confetti, while another looks really stuttery. The first one looks incredible because it kind of cheated on the test and it surpassed the limits. It shot all the way up to 21 megabits per second during the confetti segment. The rest of the content from all tests is strictly limited to the limited bit rate. So it's a fair fight otherwise, but keep that in mind while you're watching them. Okay, it's testing time. Head to the description and watch the streams in a blind test. Watch them, take notes, pick your favorites first, and then expand the descriptions inside those videos to reveal which is which. We'll pause so you can do that, and then I'll come back and we can compare notes. We're back, and this time we have some obvious differences to talk about. And remember, everything from here on out is opinion-based. Well, almost. Let's start with number one, color depth. Using the first section of the test, the fading color gradients on the top right, the swirling gradients on the left, and the static gradients on the bottom left, the Talon shows almost no stair-stepping or color banding. It's the best I've seen since the Makito X4E in our first ever test, though if you're comparing those, in my opinion, the Makito just edges it out. Either way, this is a stellar result. The Ultra Encode and the Edgecaster, though, each have their own problems with color. On first glance, the lack of stair-stepping and color blocking on the Ultra Encode looks great. It just looks fuzzy and flat. The Edgecaster, it shows more stair-stepping in the fading color gradients and looks a bit stuttery up here on the top right. Number two, noise and confetti. I have to give this winner to the Ultra Encode. Now, the noise on the bottom right of the test patterns comes in and out, but it's there. The colorful confetti isn't as colorful as the others, but it keeps some clarity and definition. The edge caster looks awful. I don't think it knows that this is not supposed to be four stripes of gray. The noise is completely gone. The confetti looks like static noise half the time, giving the impression that there's actually less confetti than there is. This is the worst result I've seen in this test. And if you're streaming esports with particle effects or, I don't know, snowboarding or confetti, I would just stay away from it. And then we have the Talon, which was both the best and the worst at the same time because it either cheated or completely failed. When I was conducting the test, I thought it looked great until I noticed that YouTube complained about a high bit rate. And indeed, the talent has no way to enforce a strict constant bit rate. But this only came out during the confetti, nowhere else. Let's just say, for example, that I replaced the fleet of High Vision Makito X4Es that currently do our New Year's Eve show with a bunch of talents. It's about 40 channels of encode in total. The near quadrupling of bandwidth that would happen just after the confetti goes at midnight would take down the entire show at the worst possible time. If I want to prevent this, I would have to turn on frame skipping, but that is not an elegant solution, and it should have better options. Most encoders have more seamless ways of handling this, so the Talon's disqualified. 
It either looks great or it looks awful. Number three, movement. The quick waving animation on the top left here and the ripples on the right were the primary ways we figured this out. This is simple. The ultra encode looks choppy while the talon and edge caster look smooth. That's it. <laughs> and finally, framing and gop structure. This is the last one, and it's really only something you can figure out if a decoder tells you, and it really only matters if your decoder or your player cares. But it also does happen to affect efficiency. Among the many settings that are made available to you, the Talon lets you control the GOP structure, which really helps its customizability. For our test for a control, we just set it to I and P frames only. The Ultra Encode doesn't give you control of anything on the GOP structure, it just uses I and P frames. And the Edge Caster also has no control of it and has a variable number of B frames present at almost all times. So who won? Well, I don't think it's that simple. I think each encoder performed to its price point. If the Ultra Encode dealt with color and contrast better, I would actually prefer it to the Edge Caster. I also think that at its price tier, the Ultra Encode is pretty unique and it stacks up well. On the other hand, I was a bit disappointed with the Edge Caster, and I think that for its price, I would personally go the software encoder route. That's because I've seen Edge Casters in the wild more than the other encoders we've tested here, but I've also seen them fail and die not infrequently. So for me, the whole hardware reliability argument doesn't work there. Finally, the Talon looks great, and it's very well-rounded. It's just up to you if the price difference is worth it. And for us and our clients, it is. But we already have a ton of Mikitos, so we'll keep it around for smaller shows that still need the great quality when we need it. What other hardware encoders should we test? Let us know, and please like this video if you enjoyed the test, and let us know what your findings were. Thanks for your participation, and we'll see you next time.